In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to read to you an entry from Bishop Theophan the Recluse, Thoughts for Each Day of the Year. It's for today. But first, I want to make a few comments. And I have to give you a caveat. My favorite definition of a priest is a sinner helping other sinners not to sin. So that's what I am. And so when I say something that you should do, I'm really saying something that I should do, that we should do. So he writes about vigil, and I have a few comments about that. When you've read this, or when you've listened to me read it at the end, shouldn't you want to get up a little earlier, pray a little bit later at night, sleep a little bit less, go to vigil, or stay at, for the whole vigil, or for that matter, pay attention during vigil? How much of the time that we waste in our life will leave us wanting when we are a moment of temptation. How much? Do we know? We don't know, do we? Could it be that the laziness that we did uh, executed this week will leave us wanting when there is a moment of great temptation for us? We don't know. Allow me a little personal story. It's one that has affected my flock, and I hope that it's affected them very positively. It's a little different than some other parishes. We serve the Letia at every Saturday vigil, in fact, really every vigil. Most parishes don't serve the Saturday litya. Old believers do, but in, in common parish usage, it's not served. Father Nicholas and I decided to start serving it because, well, the world is a mess, isn't it? We see what's going on right now in uh, Gaza and Israel. It's the same old story. It's people killing people and saying that their side is, is the one that's the best. It happens everywhere whether it's Ukraine, whether it's Hamas, uh, or, or excuse me, Gaza, and of course, Gaza is not Hamas. Hamas are a few terrorists that live in Gaza. And I'm not trying to make a political commentary here, but the fact is that people die all the time in horrible ways, are mistreated in horrible ways, people commit suicide, people have uh, no un understanding of what their life is all about, and so many other terrible things are going on in the world. Father Nicholas and I thought we must ask the prayers of the saints with the Litya service, which is very powerful, invokes the prayers of many saints, and has very powerful prayers. Now, I'm going to tell you something, a little confession. We didn't always do this, so when we did serve the Litya, it was for a feast day. And sometimes, a feast day was during the week, of course, and I was tired, and the Litya prayer seemed to be very long. And sometimes I wondered, oh, do I really want to include them or not? And sometimes, to our shame, we thought, oh, there's not enough time, we're too tired, we're not going to include them. Well, now we include them all the time. And prayers that seemed to be very long, now seem to be very sweet and very short and very beautiful, and I can't imagine going without them anymore. Now, I'm not telling you this to say that I'm some sort of prayer warrior or to let my left hand know what the right hand's doing. I'm not bragging about it. Just saying that when we become more vigorous in our prayer, we adapt to it. And we want more. So in this small thing, we become more vigorous as a parish and we've adapted to it. At least I've adapted to it. I hope my parishioners have as well. If you become lazy, you get more lazy. So if you're lazy today, likely you'll be more lazy tomorrow. If you are industrious today and work hard today, if you pray with vigil today, it's more likely you'll pray with vigil tomorrow. It's just a human characteristic. So the question is, how much time do you have to be lazy? How much time is left for you to be lazy? Perhaps you could be lazy for many more years and then you could recover and you could do just fine. Or perhaps you'll die tomorrow. Or perhaps You'll live another 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, but your laziness will have increased and you won't know how to pray. And when you are in moments of great temptation, you won't know what to do. So we don't have a whole lot of time. This is the context in which I want you to listen to Bishop Theophon's words, which are truly inspired by the Holy Spirit since he's a saint. This is commenting on Luke 6, 12 through 19, which is today's reading. And it's just this part. And he continued at night in prayer to God, Luke 6, 12. 
Here is the foundation and the beginning of Christian all-night vigils. Prayerful ardor chases away sleep, and exhilaration in the spirit does not allow one to notice the passing of time. True men of prayer do not notice this. It seems to them that they just began to pray, and meanwhile, day has already appeared. But until one reaches such perfection, one must take the labor of vigils. Solitaries have borne this and continue to bear it. Cenobites, too, have borne this and continue to bear it. Reverend and God-fearing people have borne this and continue to bear it. But although vigil comes with difficulty, its fruit remains in the soul, directly and constantly present. Tranquility of soul and contrition, along with the weakening and the exhaustion of the body. It is a state very valuable for those who are zealous about prospering in the spirit. This is why in places where vigils are established, on Athos, they do not want to give them up. Everyone acknowledges how difficult it is, but no one has a desire to rescind this order of things for the pro sake of profit which the soul receives from vigils. Sleep, more than anything, relaxes and feeds the flesh. Vigils, more than anything, humble it. One who has enough sleep is burdened by spiritual deeds and is cold towards them. He who is vigilant is quick in movement like a gazelle and burns in spirit. If the flesh, like a slave, must be taught to be good, there is no better way to succeed in this than through frequent vigils. Here the flesh fully feels the power of the spirit over it and learns to submit to it, while the spirit acquires the habit of reigning over the flesh. Through the prayers of our Holy Father, Theophon the Ruklos, O Lord Jesus Christ, help us to keep vigil, not be so lazy. And God bless you and help you in all things. Amen.